can. Well, this is going to be a recording for the Diaspora Church, dated Saturday, 6 April 2024. What we are going to read today, and what we're going to learn about today, is our calling from God. In 1 Peter 2.21, we have this statement, For to this you were called. Now, in verses 18 to 21, Peter addresses the problem of, you know, people who were believers, but they were actually servants or slaves to their masters. This was a very big problem. All right, so we need to understand quite a few things here, but let's begin with this idea of our calling. To this you were called. Now we have to ask ourselves what this means. First, we need to understand that the call of God may be understood in a number of ways rather than a fixed idea. So the call of God has to do with, for example, salvation. And the word call here may be understood simply as an invitation to believe in the Lord Jesus, to receive the Lord Jesus, and find salvation. We call this a call to salvation. Then we also have another one where we have a call to serve God. Right? So this is quite common. In the Old Testament, Moses called upon Israel to serve God. The prophets called upon the people to repent from their sins to serve God. The apostles are also asked to ask the church to serve the Lord. This is a very common thing. So two major aspects may be highlighted. The call to salvation and the call to serve God. How do we appreciate the call of God? Well, as we try to understand the word of God and the call of God, we must find it truly gracious. It is out of grace and mercy that God would even call us who are totally unworthy to serve, to be saved and to serve. And so when we look at the call of God, the word gracious must come to mind. It is also glorious. Glorious because the call of God is full of glory. It comes from God in heaven. It is given to us in more ways than one and made applicable. And it is wonderful to see how God would call different people at different times through many eras, through many, many different uh, centuries. God graciously calls and then we understand the glory behind it. <clears throat> but today we are introduced to a new aspect. And this new aspect is, to, uh, is a call to follow the Lord Jesus with a special focus on suffering. That's what we mean, to this you were called. Well, the Lord Jesus Christ himself is an example for, for us. First, God the Father sent him, which means to say that there was a call from the Father for him to be sent. And he fulfilled this call by being sent by God the Father. Now that is wonderful to note, right? So he knew what he came to do. He would be sent to redeem mankind from sin and from Satan. That is a huge, tremendously huge task to fulfill. Now he will have to fully obey the Father's plan of redemption. Now that is absolutely important. He has to fulfill everything that is required uh, of him from the Father. Well, we have this word here, right? So as we read the Gospels, there were three main ministries that the Lord Jesus had to fulfill. One, he had to preach the word, the gospel of salvation. Two, he has to teach disciples. Three, he has to heal the many who came to him. All kinds of diseases were brought to him for him to heal. There were people who were uh, possessed by evil spirits and he had to cast them out and to heal whatever damage there may be to that particular person. There could be a damage of the mind, 
in the emotions, in the physical body, and the Lord was there to heal every aspect of the person. And that is wonderful to take note of. But however, there is one other aspect that we need to look at very carefully. And that aspect is the aspect of enduring salvation. And this is important, sorry, the enduring suffering. The, the problem with wanting to bring about salvation is that it will ent entail enduring suffering. That is the problem. And as we read the scriptures, we are absolutely amazed at what the Lord Jesus Christ had to suffer. He had to suffer under the scribes, the chief priests, he had to suffer under the Romans and finally put to death. All these things were a part of his suffering. Did the Lord Jesus fulfill all these things, including suffering? And the answer is yes. The Lord Jesus was obedient to the Father, completely, sincerely, wholeheartedly. That was what is his example. And this is where we are now challenged to consider. To this you were called. This particular call was made specific to those who were slaves. That is what we are reading here. So when Peter wrote, Servants, be submissive to your masters with all fear. Not only to the good and gentle masters, but also to the harsh ones. For this is commendable. If because of conscience toward God, one endures grief, suffering wrongfully. And Peter went on to say, For what credit is it if when you are beaten for your faults, you take it patiently? But when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. And there is the famous statement, For to this you were called, because Christ the Lord Jesus also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Now this is our challenge. Our challenge is not only to believe in the Lord Jesus for salvation, our call is not only to serve Him faithfully and fruitfully, our call is to follow the Lord Jesus fully in the, in the, in the matter of suffering for the sake of our faith. Now, the problem of slavery is a very, very big one in the first century. Slavery was a widespread problem. In fact, it is said, that if you look at the Roman citizenship, there were more slaves than there were Roman citizens in, that, in their time. So this problem of slavery was in fact a very widespread problem. And some believers were actually slaves. They heard about the Lord Jesus. They responded in their hearts. They found faith in the Lord Jesus and they were believers. They were called children of God from then onwards because of faith in the Lord Jesus. But they were still essentially slaves. The question then is, how does a, what is a Christian slave like? What should he be? What should he do? Peter's advice is very clearly stated here from verses 18 to 21. We are slaves were to practice submission to the masters with fear meaning reverence all fear means great reverence right now this is important now some masters were good and gentle and perhaps they were christian masters but the reality of it all is that not very many of them were good and gentle masters some of them were very harsh. Now, what would a harsh master do? For example, a harsh master can physically beat their slaves. 
and you cannot report to the police. There is no police to report to. You cannot report to, to even the magistrate. Why? Because the master owns the slaves. So if the master owns the slaves, then the slaves have got no right, there is no recourse, there is nothing available at all in any way. So they have to bear patiently. Now, this is a big uh, issue. Supposing a slave is beaten, but the fault for causing the beating is the fault of the slave. Now, if he is bearing his suffering patiently, Peter says, that's normal. You deserve the beating. You deserve the punishment. You take it patiently. That's nothing much to uh, be pleased about. That's normal. It's expected. However, the situation may arise when harsh treatment may also be meted up and that wrongfully right so if you are doing something good you're doing something required you're doing something that is not wrong and yet you still get to be punished you still have to suffer how should you respond now peter tells us if you can take it patiently as if you suffered wrong Right? As if you were in the wrong. And if you can take it patiently, when you did not do wrong, you are in fact in the right. And you can still bear it patiently. This approach, Peter tells us, is commendable before God. This is good. Commendable. And this is in fact following the footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we have a very, very stirring um, text to read as we, list, as, we, as we read 1 Peter 2, verses 18 to 21. We have the example of the Lord Jesus, and we are challenged to walk in His footsteps. Not just in salvation, not just in service, but also in suffering. This is a great challenge to fully walk in the footsteps of the Lord Jesus. Now, it's not an easy thing to do. But when we really try and succeed walking in the footsteps of the Lord Jesus, great is that joy in the heart that we are identified with the Lord Jesus and we are, in fact, walking in His footsteps. Now, what would it take to be able to do this successfully as faithful followers, faithful disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. First, it will obviously take a lot of courage. It takes courage to suffer. It takes courage to suffer wrongfully. It takes courage to bear patiently and not try to strike back and hit back at the masters. It takes a lot of courage. That is what the Lord Jesus Christ displayed, a lot of courage. It will also take a lot of character. You know, courage and character are not separated. A Christian character is cultivated through his faith, through his knowledge, through his understanding, through his identification with the Lord Jesus Christ. It takes character of this kind. And it will also take one more thing that we must add. It will take commitment to be a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. It takes a lot of commitment to deny self, to carry our cross, and to follow the Lord Jesus. It takes a lot of commitment. And our commitment is given because of a true, genuine faith in the Lord Jesus. The commitment is possible because we learn to love the Lord Jesus as our Savior, as our Master. And when we combine these three things together, courage, character, commitment, then we will find that we will indeed be able to walk in the footsteps of the Lord Jesus 
following him closely and thus fulfill that which we are called to do. So let's be taken, be taken up to be challenged in our heart to receive salvation, to respond with service, and then with courage be able to learn how to suffer for our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the example of our precious Savior, the Lord Jesus. We thank you for what he did for us, how he was able to suffer as he did. And he was willing to do this so that we can be redeemed, be saved. Help us to love our master, to be identified with him, to find the courage and the character and the commitment to walk in his footsteps. For we know that it is to this we have been called. We pray for your blessings, your grace and your mercy. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you.